So Professor Falco, when you are ready, um, you can go ahead. I'm trying to get rid of um, multiple bars that appeared. Um, do you see the uh, additional bars on my screen? Do they abstract the view or, or not? I think we're good. Extra what? Bars. Yeah, so far. No, we're good. Okay. Um, no, we're fine. We're fine. Can you move your cursors? Do you see my um, my pointer? Yes. Yes, okay. I can see your pointer. Yes. Right. Thank you. Please go um, ahead. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to uh, give online talk. Um, um, what I would like to do uh, in this presentation is uh, uh, to tell about the system that we studied over the recent years. Um, basically to describe uh, the uh, possibility to tune uh, system parameters and to achieve uh, various regimes for uh, artificial lattices uh, that uh, one can get uh, in transition metal dehalcogenide bilayers by uh, changing the twist angle or choosing uh, the pair of materials uh, that form the interface. Um, just um, some reason it's what I don't. Sorry, I I got into troubles because bar appeared, which I, doesn't allow me to move. Oh no, I can. Um, how do I get rid of it? Um, Um, all right. Um, so the, the systems that uh, I'll be talking about today uh, are uh, slightly twisted bilayers of uh, transition metal dehalcogenides from the group which uh, is shown uh, on the slide. Uh, these are uh, mid-band gap semiconductors, uh, and their interest uh, for applications was driven by the strong light matter interaction in the systems. And that is why at, at the end, I'll describe uh, the uh, option that we uh, got for uh, heterostructures of same halcogen uh, TMDs uh, to have to host uh, quantum dots uh, that may provide single photon emission functionality uh, in the telecommunications range. Uh, and that comes from very strong confinement that one can achieve uh, in uh, those systems and to understand where this confinement uh, of electrons uh, and holes in the quantum dots comes from, uh, we need to discuss several uh, effects which uh, occur mostly starting from the uh, structural properties which uh, we also studied uh, in detail, both theoretically and tested experimentally. Uh, and uh, there will be several experimental results that uh, we use to compare our calculations. Uh, those have been uh, uh, obtained by the group of uh, Roman Harbachev, who developed uh, the method of uh, uh, transferring two-dimensional layers of Van der Waals materials uh, in ultra-high vacuum, achieving extremely high quality of the interfaces. Uh, and upon annealing, uh, reaching the regimes uh, that we call uh, lattice reconstruction and marginally twisted uh, bilayers. And by marginally twisted, uh, just we understand small angles uh, and how small we'll discuss in the next couple of slides. Uh, so what uh, is the starting point for uh, this uh, discussion? It is that uh, the physics of twisted structures with either the same a lattice in both layers or uh, slightly in commensurate uh, lattice with slightly uh, different uh, lattice constants uh, is physics of uh, Moira super lattice. And in Moira super lattice, you have a periodic variation uh, of uh, mutual uh, positioning of atoms in the two layers, uh, which has a period dependent on the twist angle. Uh, and for transition metal dehalcogenides, it is also important to take into account the uh, orientation of the unit cells, 
uh, of the two crystals. One we call parallel, and this you can imagine when uh, if you take the same uh, layer, cut it uh, into two halves, and then move by parallel uh, transposition to put one half on the top of the other. So then the unit cells of the material will be uh, parallel to each other. And the other way uh, you can uh, assemble the structure is by rotating by 60 degree uh, due to 120 degree symmetry of the crystal. It's the same as uh, rotating by uh, 180. Uh, and due to the uh, lack of inversion center uh, in the uh, individual layers, uh, these two structures uh, have uh, different properties, both in terms of uh, how uh, electronic properties are set, but uh, the first thing that we'll discuss uh, today will be how this affects the structural properties uh, of uh, the layers. Uh, the way to talk about the uh, uh, about the uh, Moira super lattice, uh, uh, it starts uh, by saying we put two layers on the top of each other. We look at the effect of the uh, rotation of the crystals as rigid objects. Uh, but what we'll uh, discuss first today is that uh, it is not necessarily like that. Uh, it uh, happens that uh, the uh, even despite weak uh, Van der Waals coupling between the layers, uh, because those layers are so thin, uh, there is a reconstruction of the layers happening. And the first thing to do is to establish uh, when uh, the conditions, when this reconstruction takes place. Uh, and what we find is that uh, reconstruction occurs into uh, networks of domain and domain walls. Uh, and uh, then uh, there is a bit of uh, classical physics uh, of uh, those structures related just to lattice reconstruction and piezoelectric effect uh, that uh, we need to take into account, having in mind that uh, the individual layers uh, have no inversion symmetry. Uh, and uh, for uh, parallel orientation of the unit cells of the crystals, we find uh, a weak uh, ferroelectric charge transfer, which was uh, quite entertaining exercise, uh, uh, which was also observed experimentally. Uh, and after I describe those uh, effects uh, that uh, determine uh, later the band structure of the electrons close to the uh, bandages in the conduction band and valence band, now affected by the periodic uh, strain by periodic piezoelectric charges or uh, variation of the interlayer charge uh, transfer for electric type, uh, then uh, we can talk about the more superlysis mini bands for electrons uh, and uh, look at the regimes, uh, how these mini bands get narrower uh, upon uh, elongating the period of the super lattice, which can be achieved for, for homobilayers by uh, choosing smaller angle uh, of uh, misalignment. Um, and then um, after I describe what we learned about the uh, the uh, uh, homobile layers uh, with, uh, with a strong lattice reconstruction, uh, I'll then focus at the uh, case that uh, we found quite interesting recently, uh, which is about uh, same halogen uh, uh, bilayers of uh, uh, TMDs with different metals like molybdenum disulfate and tungsten disulfate. Uh, and uh, for those, uh, I'll show that uh, there is additional effect of strain, which is not present in homo bilayers, uh, which comes through the uh, hydrostatic strain, uh, which has opposite sign in the two layers because they initially have slightly different lattice constants. Uh, which locally, uh, upon adjusting, uh, produces a hydrostatic strain of the opposite sign in the two layers. And that effect has a, a very pronounced effect on the band structure, creating uh, the arrays of self-organized quantum dots, both for electrons and holes at the same place, so that we get uh, self-organized quantum dot arrays for excitons as well. So this is my plan, and I start with the uh, discussion of what happens with the structure. Uh, what is shown here is the calculation using density function theory of the interlayer distance dependence of the crystal energy uh, for uh, various uh, ways to put uh, one monolayer on the top of another. 
Uh, we did this analysis for uh, all TMDs, and also we uh, looked at the heterostructures forcefully making their lattice constants equal, and we checked that it doesn't matter uh, whether we uh, fit the lattice constant, for example, of tungsten deselenide to, uh, uh, to molybdenum deselenide. Uh, the results uh, for the uh, for what we need for the analysis of the st structures uh, at the mesoscale, uh, they, uh, they coincide. Uh, so what you uh, see uh, in, in these uh, panels, on the left-hand side, this analysis of bilayers with anti parallel stacking of the unit cells, and not a surprise that uh, the lowest energy configuration comes as 2H stacking, which is what grows uh, in the bulk material. The next one on the energy scale is uh, the stacking where you put metal on the top of metal in the two layers, uh, but now the halogens are not on the top of each other. The halogens, uh, because of the anti parallel orientation of the unit cells, are actually at the largest distance from each other. And actually, the distance between halogens, when it is large, is determines the energetics of the interlayer interaction, uh, because the halogens are in the outer sublayers of the crystal, uh, and uh, also uh, they have uh, p orbitals which are sticking out, which uh, provide the uh, uh, interlayer uh, interaction repelling uh, from each other, and therefore uh, the largest distance between halogens is uh, is 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 what the crystal wants to have to minimize its energy. Uh, then the highest energy corresponds to the case when the two halogens are on the top of each other. We call it XX prime stacking, so that halogen in the top layer appears to be in, uh, uh, in the top of uh, halogen in the bottom layer. Uh, there is a similar behavior in terms of uh, exact stacking for the uh, uh, for this uh, uh, bilayers with parallel orientation of the unit cells, uh, but for the lowest energy, uh, we actually have two degenerate uh, configurations, two configurations with the same uh, uh, with the same energy. Uh, they are mirror images of each other. They're basically the twins. Uh, of each other, uh, and they correspond to that uh, in the bottom layer, uh, uh, halogen appears to be under the metal in the top layer, uh, whereas the other sublattices uh, in each layer, uh, they appear in the middle of the hexagon in, in, in the uh, layer above or below. Uh, and there are two uh, configurations uh, that you can get one from the other by uh, mirror reflection. Uh, they have the same energy. Uh, and uh, what we also did in this analysis, we calculated energies for actually multiple ways to uh, offset one layer with the respect to the other to obtain the analytical expression by interpolation, uh, which allows us to describe uh, the uh, dependence on the interlayer distance for uh, any arbitrary offset uh, of uh, the atoms in the uh, top layer crystal with respect to the bottom layer crystal. Why do we want to do that? Uh, because for small angles of misalignment, uh, the local stacking of uh, the two uh, layers uh, varies uh, slowly at the scale of the lattice constant. So that the local calculation we did in the DFT allows us uh, to uh, describe uh, the uh, dependence of adhesion energy on the local stacking. Uh, and this local stacking uh, is the reason for the layers uh, or this energy uh, of adhesion is the reason for the layers uh, to adjust uh, their lattice constant or the atomic positions to each other uh, from the initial one to the energetically more preferential. Uh, locally, it happens by a bit of swelling uh, at uh, for each uh, of the uh, offsets uh, and then uh, adjusting by displacement uh, inside of the top and in the bottom layers by the deformations uh, that, uh, of course, uh, cost the uh, the uh, strain energy. And then altogether, if we minimize this, uh, we get the overall structure uh, of the deformations and the overall structure of the atomic positions uh, in both crystals. So what the starting point here before this uh, relaxation uh, is done numerically, uh, we implement the Moiré periodicity by uh, the uh, by this uh, uh, R naught dependence on the coordinate, uh, which is determined by a small misalignment angle, uh, which uh, is accounted as rotation of one crystal uh, with respect to another, and also by uh, a small 
uh, uh, mismatch of the uh, two lattices of the two materials. And for the combination of uh, this uh, transition metal dehalkogenides that we look at, uh, this parameter delta is less than few percent. Uh, and for the same halkogen uh, bilayers, uh, delta is even less than 1%. So that we're talking about really long period structures uh, with uh, the description that we get from this analytical uh, formula for, for the interpolation formula uh, for the adhesion energy combined with uh, the uh, macro scale, mesoscale, uh, uh, mesoscale elasticity theory. Uh, it gives us uh, a, a, a sufficient uh, uh, accuracy to describe uh, the deformations and the uh, and to obtain the atomic positions of the two layers with respect to each other. So then uh, after we have this instrument, we can look at uh, different situations. We can look at larger angles of misalignment and smaller angles of misalignment. And what we find is that for this TMD systematically, if for anti pearl uh, orientation of the unit cells, uh, the angles are uh, more than one degree. And for parallel, if they're more than two and a half degree, uh, then there is very little reconstruction of the lattice taking place. And this is understandable based on the argument of comparing the uh, area of uh, domains that may form by uh, reconstructing into energetically preferential uh, stacking configurations uh, and uh, the energy cost of the main walls between those domains, which would scale linearly uh, with the period of the super lattice. So that if angle or uh, if angle is, is uh, not small enough, uh, or there is a, a lattice mismatch which is large enough, uh, then the period of the super lattice is too short for the uh, domains of preferential stacking to develop to take over uh, the energy cost of the deformations which are required for the formation of the domains. And if the angles are smaller uh, than those, then a distinct structure of domains uh, appears uh, and the structure of domains is different for uh, anti parallel and for parallel orientation of unit cells. So, in the uh, right uh, uh, hand side, in the uh, bottom, we have uh, the uh, examples of what we get if we take this angle very small. For anti parallel configuration of the unit cells of the two crystals, the domains that form the uh, are two H stacking domains. Uh, so that's where the halogens are above metals and metals are above halogens in both layers. And the domain walls that separate them, uh, they have this uh, a network structure with corners, uh, which uh, are different. There are three corners where uh, the uh, halogens are on the top of each other. And there are other three corners where the metals are on the top of each other. And this is energetically not so bad uh, for the uh, bilayers uh, structure. Uh, and that is why uh, these corners are kind of swelled. Uh, they are actually small seeds of uh, this MM prime stacking uh, with the size of several nanometers. Uh, for the parallel orientation of the unit cells, uh, the structure is different. Uh, it's a triangular uh, lattice. It's triangular lattice uh, with domains uh, of uh, uh, MX and XM stacking. Uh, these domains are uh, the lattice structure of these domains is a mirror image of each other. And uh, these uh, uh, domains are separated by domain walls, which are nothing but partial dislocations uh, known in a 3R. Uh, in three year uh, uh, structure of uh, bulk TMDs. Uh, and uh, in the corners of the domain wall network, uh, we have uh, small areas, uh, kind of dot like objects uh, with XX prime stacking, which is energetically less, least favorable. Uh, just to mention that uh, the domain walls in the uh, in the case of uh, anti parallel orientation of the unit cells, the domain walls that separate uh, consecutive to H stacking domains are nothing but uh, full uh, screw dislocations. And the partial dislocations uh, are the feature of uh, the crystal that uh, allow uh, for, for, for the twins. And as I mentioned before, some halogen heterobilayers. Uh, they have such small lattice mismatch that uh, if we align them uh, sufficiently, then uh, the reconstruction of the lattice into 2H domains or XM and X prime 
uh, domains uh, would uh, take place uh, just because the long period of the super lattice allows uh, for the uh, uh, for the adhesion energy to take over the energetic cost of the strain. Uh, we had uh, a chance to check the uh, calculations with quite a lot of details. This has been done against the measurement uh, using uh, scanning transmission electron microscopy performed by the group of uh, of Haig. Uh, Sarah Haig uh, uh, did uh, multiple structures analysis uh, and uh, the transmission electron microscopy is sensitive to positioning of uh, metal atoms with respect to each other because uh, in the case of sulfate, they carry more electrons and therefore uh, they uh, are more obstruction for transmission of uh, the electrons from the microscope. Uh, and uh, we compared in details various situations and uh, we got a lot of confidence in that uh, the, uh, the uh, numerical analysis we perform on the structure, it does correspond to what uh, happens in reality. So that uh, we uh, had a chance to start looking uh, at a uh, bit more physics that uh, uh, it can be related to the uh, networks of these domains and domain walls, uh, in particular to start with the domain walls uh, and, uh, and um, uh, to implement uh, this piezoelectric and electric polarization stuff that uh, I, I promised. But before that, I would like to uh, clear my mind and uh, um, my conscience and, and to uh, say a couple of words about the uh, situation when the lattice reconstruction is actually weak, uh, where uh, the main effect of the lattice is uh, swelling in the vertical direction, uh, if it, it, if it uh, actually happens. Uh, and the physics uh, uh, in this case is more or less the physics of uh, more a mini bands uh, where you uh, can take into account uh, the interlayer hopping uh, between the layers, which is also periodically modulated, uh, taking into account this uh, change of the interlayer distance and the influence of the interlayer hopping uh, of, the, of the local stacking on, on the uh, interlayer hopping matrix elements. Uh, and uh, obviously, the interlayer hopping is the strongest. Uh, when you have bandages uh, as close uh, as possible to each other in the two layers. Uh, such a situation is realized in molybdenum, deselenite, and tungsten disulfide heterostructures for the conduction bandage. Uh, and then there is a bit of resonant uh, interlayer hybridization uh, for electrons uh, at uh, the K points uh, of uh, the hexagonal brilliant zone uh, of the crystal, which uh, represent in monolayers uh, the, uh, uh, the bandages, uh, both in conduction band and, and also in the balance band. Uh, and then what we did, we just uh, calculated the mini bands for uh, the uh, electrons. We calculated uh, those also for uh, various uh, orientations of the unit cells uh, with small variation of, uh, uh, of, of the angles from the uh, perfect alignment uh, to identify when the, uh, when the mini bands are narrower, when mini bands are, uh, uh, are thicker. Uh, and uh, we also realize that uh, when you have an uh, electron in a hole present, uh, one can start doing the uh, hybridization between the uh, intra and interlayer uh, excitons, uh, where the uh, effect of the electron hole binding additionally promotes the uh, alignment of the electron uh, uh, energy in, in the conduction bands in the boss layers, enhancing the effect of hybridization and therefore producing uh, strongly hybridized uh, intra and interlayer excitons. So this has been uh, calculated and also measured in uh, uh, optical absorption spectroscopy, uh, where it was possible to see not only that uh, excitons hybridize, but also that there is formation of mini bands, uh, which through the UNCLAP processes allows for uh, additional uh, absorption branches, which were detected uh, in, uh, in, in the uh, uh, resonance reflection experiments. Uh, also, if you uh, start playing with uh, same uh, halogen, uh, well, basically with, with homobilayers like uh, tungsten disilinate uh, bilayers, but now twisting the angle uh, going from higher uh, misalignment to lower misalignment, uh, one can also uh, look at those mini bands 
they would appear both uh, for conduction band and valence band. Uh, one would have to be very careful uh, what to uh, discuss in terms of uh, relevant electronic properties. For example, for absorption, uh, it would be necessary to look at what happens at the K points of the uh, brilliant zone. Uh, for discussing the electric transport properties or P or N doped material, one would have to understand where the actual band edges are. Uh, and due to the interlayer hybridization, uh, gamma point uh, is uh, promoted very strongly in uh, the TMD. So one has to worry about what happens uh, with uh, the uh, more mini bands uh, on the uh, around the gamma point bandage in those materials. Uh, and also uh, there is interesting physics that may happen in the Q point uh, due to the interlayer hybridization as well. Uh, so what is shown here on this plots is how the uh, mini bands uh, change when the angle decreases and what you see is that they systematically get narrower. Uh, and this is uh, not a very uh, difficult thing to expect because uh, when you have bandages and when they're modulated for heavy carriers, you get uh, objects which uh, start resembling more and more quantum dots. And then the separation uh, the linear scale separation uh, in terms of distances between uh, those quantum dots, which uh, follows the decreasing uh, angle of misalignments uh, just through the uh, longer period of more super lattice, uh, it makes uh, the bands narrower and uh, just transforms the system into the arrays of quantum dots uh, from what otherwise we would describe as uh, quantum material with many bands. And this is where the uh, the reconstruction of the crystal starts playing uh, even more important role because uh, the form and the nature of uh, and position across the supercell of the quantum dots that we're talking about uh, will be strongly affected by the developing deformations by piezoelectric potential, by ferroelectric charge transfer, and also by the band gap renormalization uh, that takes place in the system. So this is an example of how this looks at the mesoscale at the distances of many uh, nanometers uh, when it's uh, again looked uh, in transmission electron microscopy, what you see here are the main walls because that's where the uh, variation of uh, the local stacking uh, takes place. Uh, inside the domains, transmission electron microscopy uh, here does not give information, for example, whether it is MX or XM stacking uh, for pill orientation of the unit cells of the crystals. Uh, and uh, what you see in the two examples on the left hand side is. Uh, the sequence of uh, hexagonal-like uh, domains uh, with two H stacking separated by dislocations. And on the right-hand side, for parallel orientation of the unit cells of the two materials, uh, you see the triangular network uh, of uh, domains and domain, wall net, domain walls uh, with uh, the dots here representing uh, the stacking, which corresponds to uh, halogen sitting on the top of each other. Um, when uh, you have deformations, uh, then in each of the two layers, uh, these deformations, when they're inhomogeneous, uh, they produce uh, piezoelectric charges. This is because uh, the materials we talk about uh, don't have inversion symmetry, uh, and also because uh, there is charge transfer between the atoms, uh, because it's not purely uh, uh, covalent bonding in the crystal, there is a bit of uh, uh, polar coupling uh, in the materials. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, we have uh, charges that get accumulated uh, around uh, the main walls uh, in each of the two layers. Now, what happens in the anti-parallel orientation of the unit cells of the two crystals is that there is a cancellation of two minuses that happen, uh, producing the same charge accumulated in both layers on the top of each other. The reason is that uh, the deformations you need uh, to develop or crystals need to develop to bring their lattices together, they have the opposite signs uh, and therefore produce opposite sign of strain tensors uh, at the same places uh, in the geographic uh, Mora pattern. But uh, at the same time, the two unit cells of the two crystals are inverted and therefore material constants uh, of uh, piezoelectricity are also 
uh, of the opposite sign. Those two minuses cancel, and then we get a modulation of charge, uh, which produces modulation of electrostatic potential, uh, the same sign in both layers. Uh, and this basically starts modulating the position of the uh, bandages uh, in, 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 in the same way for uh, the conduction and balance band. And as a result of this uh, is that uh, the uh, corners of the domain wall network where, the, uh, where this uh, effect is the largest, uh, they start becoming uh, the uh, uh, minima and maxima uh, of potential, uh, of, as a potential producing kind of quantum dots uh, which separate uh, geographically on the uh, more pattern uh, the uh, the minima uh, of energy for electrons and poles. Uh, so those uh, we uh, we can identify, and also uh, the charges that uh, correspond to this they have been measured by uh, uh, scanning uh, Kelvin probe microscopy, uh, and they uh, reasonably correspond uh, to uh, what we uh, calculated, knowing the uh, piezoelectric. Uh, parameters uh, of the crystals. So what we did with this, uh, we use that together with the modulation of the interlayer hybridization of bandages uh, for uh, different parts, uh, for different relevant parts for the local minima and maxima uh, of conduction band and balance band respectively. Uh, and uh, we had to do that because, uh, as I mentioned before, the hybridization between the bandages in the two layers is the strongest around the gamma point. That's where electrons have uh, less problem to tunnel uh, from one layer to another. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, when we look at uh, different uh, different uh, parts of the uh, of the band structure of the brilliant zone, uh, we have different answers about uh, what happens with the bandages. For example, for the uh, balance band, uh, for systematically for TMDs, well, maybe except for tungsten deselenite, uh, we get uh, the uh, uh, the bandage for the uh, balance band at uh, the two H stacking domains. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, when we look at uh, the uh, at the uh, electrons, uh, which may be in uh, in the K point or uh, due to interlayer hybridization of orbitals at another local minimum uh, in in the uh, Brillouin zone, uh, which is called the Q valley, uh, we uh, also get. Uh, the uh, uh, the minima of of uh, the energy in the corners uh, of the uh, uh, of the domain wall network. So it starts looking like uh, we get uh, a variety of uh, opportunities which can be also tuned, as you can see from the comparison of small angles and large angles, uh, by changing the uh, the uh, angle of the twist. Another piece of physics that uh, we came across is the interlayer charge transfer, which we call weak uh, for electric effect. Uh, and uh, this comes from uh, the uh, lack of inversion symmetry uh, in the structure with spell orientation of the cells of two, two layers, because both of them don't have inversion symmetry. Just to mention that 2H stacking is inversion symmetric because uh, the top layer is inverted image of, of the bottom layer. But for pell orientation, this does not happen. And for general uh, way to put top layer on the uh, top of bottom layer, uh, there is no also uh, mirror symmetry, which uh, in principle permits uh, out of plane polarization uh, of the bilayer, uh, which we established by both calculating the charges uh, and uh, with density functional theory, uh, and also the uh, potential uh, of the double charge layer, which uh, here is identified as parameter delta. So when we calculated it for various TMDs, we got numbers uh, between uh, 60 to 70 mil electron volts. And this uh, quantity is actually measurable uh, because if you uh, scan uh, the surface of the bilayer placed uh, on the top of a metallic plate uh, with the metallic tip uh, that measures local potential, then in Kelvin probe microscopy, you would start seeing potential steps of twice this delta when you cross the border between consecutive domains, which are mirror image of each other, and therefore they have the opposite direction of the out-of-plane electric polarization. So this has been done and tested. Uh, and uh, what you see here is statistics 
uh, obtained on multiple uh, domains in different parts of the structure with different uh, local misalignment angles. And what you see here in this histogram built from uh, this uh, uh, obtained data uh, is the value of twice this uh, delta, uh, which uh, reasonably well corresponds to uh, what we calculated in density function series. The experiment gives uh, something like 60 millivolts for delta and uh, in, in, in the DFT for molybdenum disulfide, which was studied in this experiment, uh, it was obtained about 70 millivolts. Uh, it also can be uh, tested in a different way. Uh, one can apply it out, out of plane electric field and start changing uh, the shapes uh, of the uh, domains. Uh, and when one changes the shapes of the domains, uh, one can start moving the main walls. And we developed a bit of uh, physics, uh, a bit of theory to describe uh, the variation of the structure, even uh, merging of uh, individual partial dislocations into full dislocations. And uh, this has been also uh, tested uh, by, uh, by the observations uh, of the variation of the shapes of the domains uh, in uh, various, uh, uh, various ways. Uh, in particular, this uh, experiment is a recent measurement produced by uh, Ottawa Group, uh, where they see this uh, change of the, uh, the main wall uh, shapes uh, produced by the locally applied electric field. Um, so I now jump uh, into uh, the last part of what I would like to uh, describe, uh, and this is about the uh, the uh, heterobilayers, which uh, uh, contain uh, the same uh, halogen materials in in in, in both monolayers. Uh, and the reason why uh, those are interesting is because they have a pretty close lattice constants, so that uh, those. Uh, allow for uh, a strong lattice reconstruction uh, of slightly different type as compared to what uh, happens in twisted homobilayers. In twisted homobilayers, the uh, strain has to compensate the rotation of one layer with respect to another, and therefore, in that case, strain was dominantly shear. And when we need to compensate the difference in the lattice constants, uh, then uh, slightly different things happen. We need to compensate uh, this difference by uh, hydrostatic strain. And then what happens is that over large areas of domains, uh, the hydrostatic strain uh, in each layer is small, lattice constant adjust to each other, but the remaining or the missing material has to be uh, squeezed or taken from the, uh, from the domain walls. And in the domain walls, we get the largest effects of the hydrostatic strain. In fact, the largest appears to be in the domain wall network uh, corners uh, around uh, this, in particular around this uh, places where the uh, local lattice structure is least energetically favorable. Uh, these are uh, the places where the halogens appear on the top of each other. Well, then why uh, this hydrostatic strain is so important? Well, first of all, because uh, it appears to be quite large in those corners, reaching several percent uh, of strain. Uh, and uh, the reason why we care about it is because when uh, we look at uh, the evolution of bandages in the material as a function of strain, of uh, hydrostatic strain, uh, shear strain do, does not do much, but uh, hydrostatic strain uh, changes the bandages quite a lot. And uh, when hydrostatic strain uh, component in these two layers has the opposite sign, then the bandages uh, in the two layers move against each other. In fact, uh, for the conduction bandage, which appears to be in his other structures on molybdenum layer, uh, it goes down uh, for uh, in, in the domain wall corners. Uh, and uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, tungsten layer, the balance bandage at the K point goes up. Uh, they basically come towards each other, uh, and this means that uh, for electrons, we'll get uh, the quantum dots in those corners of the main walls where we have XX prime stacking. And for the holes, we also have uh, quantum dots in the same place. So we are getting quantum dots for the excitons at the same time as for electrons and holes in the same place, which was not, by the way, uh, the case uh, in uh, HOMA bilayers where the bandages for electrons and holes appear to be in different positions. Uh, and uh, when we combine together all the factors 
that we established before the fact of piezoelectric potential uh, and also the interlayer charge transfer of electric type, which also produce the uh, interlayer uh, energy shifts. Uh, we uh, check that for a small range of misalignment angles between zero and uh, one degree, uh, the uh, effect of hydrostatic strain is uh, numerically, quantitatively the strongest, and uh, this determines uh, a different physics uh, of uh, those heterobilayers as compared to twisted, marginally twisted homobilayers. So we basically modeled uh, the strain for various uh, misalignment angles in such structure starting from uh, zero degree to uh, several looked at the evolution of the band edges. Uh, and from that, uh, we were able to construct uh, the distribution of bandage energy uh, around these uh, corners of the main wall networks. Uh, we uh, calculated the bound states for uh, electrons and bound states for holes. Uh, for the range between zero and one degree, uh, this uh, quantum wells for electrons and holes appear to be uh, so uh, deep that uh, they uh, host not only the lowest S state, uh, but also uh, the P type state uh, bound uh, in, in, in the same quantum dot. So one can start looking into physics of uh, intra dot uh, uh, terahertz transitions uh, in, in, in those systems. Uh, but most importantly for us, uh, we uh, now have uh, the electrons and holes localized in the same place. So we looked at the uh, interband optical transitions. Uh, we looked at how the energy of this uh, transition is shifted with respect to the energy of the uh, excitons, interlayer excitons or intralayer excitons uh, inside the mains. Uh, and uh, the shift we uh, computed with respect to the uh, interlayer exciton uh, ranges between uh, half and uh, 0.9 lectin volt uh, for uh, various uh, angles of misalignment between zero and half degree. And this large shift with respect to the known exciton energies uh, places the resulting transition in the telecommunications range uh, of uh, photon activity, uh, which may be quite uh, a nice thing to use uh, in terms of applications, because then we would get single photon emitters from those quantum dots exactly in the telecom range. So this is what excited us. We uh, calculated, uh, because of this, we calculated uh, the uh, uh, optical uh, polarization of these transitions. And for uh, all possible polarizations, we computed the uh, the uh, oscillator strengths, uh, and we identified one transition in one configuration uh, of, of the structures, which provides the strongest uh, coupling between the exciton and light. Uh, and uh, after we, uh, we uh, used uh, the known parameters for uh, the quantum efficiency of the exciton uh, and the computed values for the optical accelerator strengths of the exciton, uh, we came to the conclusion that we get quantum efficiency for uh, this quantum dot emission uh, which may be 1% of the exciton in, in uh, the uh, uh, molybdenum, uh, uh, molybdenum diselenite or molybdenum uh, disulfate. Uh, and uh, for those uh, systems, we therefore, for those quantum dots, uh, we therefore expect that uh, there might be uh, maximum repetition rate uh, for the uh, light emission uh, for heavily pumped uh, dots uh, going into the range of 100 megahertz. Uh, which, which is quite good uh, repetition rate for generating single photons. So this is what uh, is the last thing uh, that uh, we got, and that's what uh, I wanted to describe. Uh, and uh, just to uh, repeat what, uh, uh, just to summarize what I was talking about, uh, there is an interesting system uh, where uh, self-organization of the lattice uh, allows to uh, get uh, the arrays uh, of quantum dots uh, with, um, uh, with strong localization of charge carriers. Uh, for homobilayers, layers, uh, this would be uh, separate places uh, across more structure uh, where electrons holes would be localized. And uh, we have all the information about where the bandages are uh, across more super lattice as a function of the angle and uh, uh, quantitative description of the corresponding 
quantum dots uh, potentials. And for uh, heterobilayers with the same halogen, uh, we get uh, really strong self-organized quantum dots localizing both electrons hold the same place and therefore getting uh, strongly localized excitons. Uh, to finish, I would like to thank uh, my collaborators. So the modeling part of what I described has been done in my group at uh, National Graphene Institute uh, by Vladimir Ginaldiv and Jace McHughes. Uh, Fabio Ferrer is graduating student this year, and Sam Magorian, Victor Jolomi, uh, as well Yogiel and uh, David Ruiz Tijerina. Uh, they have already left my group uh, to start uh, their jobs elsewhere. Um, and the uh, experimental results I described in this talk, uh, they were uh, obtained by uh, on, on the material developed by uh, Roman Gorbachev. Uh, and uh, the experiments on transmission electron microscopy were done by a group of Sarah Haig. Uh, we collaborated in uh, optical characterization of the system with uh, Trakovsky group at Sheffield and with Park and Philip Kim uh, at uh, Harvard. Uh, also with David Smith at Southampton. Uh, and scanning microscopy on the structures has been done by uh, Olga Kazakova at NPL and the group of Peter Beaton and Nottingham. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. So uh, we have a couple of questions in the audience. Yes. Thank you. Um, could you please comment about um, why do you say that these um, uh, um, quantum dots are self-organized, please? Um, they're self-organized because uh, when two layers are put on the top of each other and annealed, uh, then reconstruction happens just to provide with thermodynamic state. It's not the, um, in, in, uh, in the case of uh, homobile layers, it's not the uh, most energetically favorable, which would be when two layers would actually rotate uh, microscopically, but uh, because of the uh, average uh, misalignment angle, uh, this uh, rotation does not happen uh, due to the boundary conditions set uh, at long distances. So it's self self organized because you just let it go and it forms. You don't need to do etching like uh, in uh, uh, old style semiconductors. You don't need to do patterning, just cutting pieces. It just happened by itself. Okay, any further questions or comments on the online audience? Is there a, yes. Yes, the question uh, about uh, twisted Belair dehalcogonides. Yeah. So other good one dimensional chiral states on the boundaries between domains. Uh, and can one describe them with S matrix? Um, Yes and no. Um, just I probably need to see if I have um, I may have an image, um, but I I struggle. Well, yeah, yeah. The answer is uh, the quantum dots are the dominant objects. Uh, uh, there are quantum dots. There are. Uh, kind of large area quantum dots, which are like boxes. I'll, I'll find an image in a minute, uh, which may be best to look here. Um, for example, so do, do you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah. So in the case of, uh, for example, gamma valley holes, uh, the large areas of uh, hexagonal domains uh, are the boxes where uh, the, the valence band has a maximum and therefore where the holes would be localized. Um, then you, you have boundaries which, which are basically the barriers. So th this is a case of, uh, which, which is more similar to, uh, to um, domains in, in, in metals rather than, uh, rather than quantum dots. For electrons, for example, in, uh, in the K Valley, uh, the story is, uh, is different. These are the uh, uh, 
mm coolness uh, of the main wall network where the minimum of energy is uh, and uh, you would have quantum dots for electrons with strong triangulation of their shape and you can call those uh, aphirases going out from the dot as, as quantum wires but those wires have uh, bandage uh, higher than the bandage in in the dot so they're not really uh, they're not really those objects but the interesting things happens uh, in the case of um, of the parallel lined uh, bilayers uh, where uh, the bandage modulation uh, is um, 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 actually um, uh, funny for uh, the Q valley bandages. So the Q valley uh, in terms of the brilliant zone appears to be uh, just six um, points related by rotational symmetry somewhere in the middle of the brilliant zone, not, not in the center, not in the corners. And um, in, in those uh, point, in those areas of the brilliant zone, uh, the um, um, anisotropy of the mass produces uh, uh, also the anisotropy of everything of, of the uh, transfer characteristics along those domain walls, which uh, as you can see from uh, the top uh, right-hand side image uh, are actually uh, the places for bandage. So in principle, one can have uh, the uh, quantum wire structures, uh, which would be um, quantum wires with uh, orientation rotating uh, in terms of where the minima of the bandages are. When you go from, for example, the uh, the uh, uh, valley Q1 to valley Q3 uh, or uh, to valley Q2. Uh, so that there is a bit of uh, one dimensional physics that may happen here, but it's uh, a funny one dimensional one dimensional physics due to the uh, uh, three valleys uh, in, in this system. And I don't think uh, those are actually chiral. They can be described uh, as one dimensional, but uh, one would need to take into account the, uh, the additional quantum numbers. And for each of them, uh, the, um, the set of kind of uh, the network of wires would be rotated by uh, 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 by 60 degree when you go from one valley to another. Okay, any further questions? If not, that's thanks Professor Falco again. Thank you. So we have a coffee break until 11.